Hey friends, in today's video for the Photoshop 101 series, I'm going to go through the process of dodging and burning an image in Photoshop. Hey folks, my name is David Bird with Reality Reimagine and welcome to the channel. I'm an award-winning photographer, Photoshop artist, and educator that focuses on fantasy and cosplay art. It's a thrill to share my knowledge and imagination with you and to help you create your own artwork. In this Photoshop 101 video series, we're going to explore the basic tools, functions, and techniques that I use inside of Photoshop to create the art of Reality Reimagined. This video series is sponsored by McKenna Pro, an industry-leading professional print lab for photographers and designers. They have a vast array of mediums to share your images, whether it be traditional paper prints, metal, canvas, and even weathered pieces of wood. Their albums are some of the best in the industry, and their customer service is compared to none. Whether you are a professional, hobbyist, or just have images that you want to preserve and display, McKenna will help you. Visit their site at McKennaPro.com to see their products, pricing, and to learn more. And now, to begin our journey, we're going to go into Photoshop. In the previous video, I went through the process of creating an action to do dodging and burning, which I used the curves adjustment method for dodging and burning. And now we're actually going to dodge and burn this image. So on these curves adjustment layers, each one again associated to dodge where everything is a little bit brighter, burn everything is a little bit darker and highlights everything is way blown out. And we use that one very carefully to kind of contour and make this very painterly stylized effect inside of Photoshop. We're going to start with the burn, or the, I'm sorry, the dodge layer. So I'm going to hit Z for the zoom tool to move in hitting B for brush. My opacity is set at 100% and my flow is set at 10%. And I'm going to now paint white onto this black mask. This black mask or a hide all mask is hiding the effect of this adjustment layer. When I paint white onto it, it will start revealing that effect, which makes everything brighter because we're on the dodge layer. So with the black and white adjustment layer here at the top, it's forcing us to look at just the luminosity of the image. We don't see the color. We see white, black, and gray highlights, midtones, and shadows. So it lets us kind of paint from that perspective. B for brush. I'm gonna just start looking at some of the brighter areas with the mindset of contouring her face. I want to contour that three-dimensional nature to it and start bringing some of that out. Dodging and burning can be used for skin retouching itself. You can go into every individual little pore where it's dark and lighten it up with dodging or burn some stuff in and whatever else. And that's why professional retouchers get paid a lot of money because it's an incredibly time-consuming process. In this case, I use dodging and burning for contouring mostly and kind of the illustrated effect. So I'm looking at contouring her chin. Her chin's gonna have a little bit of a curve and roundness to it. So I'm gonna paint white and I'm gonna paint it in just a little bit of an arc going back and forth. Again, I'm painting white at a flow of 10% on this black mask. So it's a very subtle little difference, a subtle little change. And then you know what? YouTube TV timeout. This is one of the tips that I would push as kind of a foundation using Photoshop. When people start working in Photoshop for the first time, they go so far with a new technique. The easiest example is eyes. When somebody retouches eyes, which by the way, there will be a video on the channel very soon uh, showing my process how I retouch eyes. When they retouch eyes and the whites of the eyes, they blow them out. Super white nuclear eyes, right? That's what I call them. They go too far. When you're working inside of Photoshop, whether it be retouching or full on artwork, subtlety is key. The more that you take subtle little gestures through the process and build them up, it makes a beautiful image. If you go too far too quickly, then the viewer's focus is pulled and they see that one thing. They see those nuclear eyes. They don't care if you spent 17 days retouching every single little pore in the skin. If the eyes are too white, that's all they see and they dismiss it. Subtle little steps inside of Photoshop will create a beautiful picture. So TV timeout, done, let's go on. So again, we've enhanced some of the whiteness down here on her chin. We're gonna go through this area right here and just kind of push up some of these highlights. We're just painting white onto the mask. We're not actually painting on her skin. We're just enhancing by using that curves adjustment layer. It has a hide all mask. When we paint white on it, it's revealing that effect. We're on the dodge layer right now. And I'm just looking at the areas of white, the lightness and the brightness on her skin and just kind of pull some of that out. I'm touching areas that again, further define the contouring of her face. Here are the uh, lip gloss. Uh, I'm just enhancing that just a little bit more. Pulling some of that in, increasing some of the overall luminosity right through here. That looks pretty good on her face. Let's come down to her neck. We can just enhance some of these uh, 
muscles and so forth in her neck. I'm gonna hit Control and minus to zoom out on my document. Now I'm gonna look at the hair. I love dodging and burning hair because it brings out the three-dimensional nature to it so easily. So I'm gonna paint some whites, again, dodging into these brighter areas. And because that black and white adjustment layer is on top, as you look at the image, you just start seeing this is a dark area, I don't need to touch it. But these areas I do wanna to touch. I wanna to bring out the luminescence to it. It'll pull it out and give it that 3D feel. And right through here. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Again, this is a subtle little step inside of the process. Now we're going to come up to the burn layer. This is my favorite layer uh, in this process because adding those shadows really helps define the contouring and pulls out that three dimensional nature. And there's a few more areas that I access with the burn layer or shadows that I don't do with dodging and burning, or with uh, the dodge layer, excuse me. So again, I'm looking at some of the darkness in these areas. I want to just pull out a little bit of this. And because this is just dealing with luminosity, we aren't painting on the layer. Once we turn off the black and white layer, you'll see the contouring effect. We aren't restructuring the color. We're just enhancing the light and the luminosity and the essence of it. I'm coming in right between your lips and just hitting that little black line in there because again, it helps create that subtle three-dimensional texture to the image. Her eyebrows, darken them up just a smidge by hitting a little bit of that burn. Hitting some of these eyelashes just a smidge to get into those effects right through here and then a little bit of the contouring on her cheek right through there this shadow area down where her chin where the light naturally fell off we're going to increase some of that just a little bit darker helps to make it believable right through here same thing we're kind of building up some of the shadows this is luminosity based, this isn't paint based, so I'm not covering up those details. I'm not getting rid of the hair. When we turn the black and white layer off, you'll still see, see the detail of the hair. But by painting in this area, it just helps to feel like the hair is coming around the face. We're creating that dimension by doing that. You wanna be careful you don't go too far over to the skin and onto it. And at any point, if you go too far, let's um, make your cheek really black. We don't like that. That's why we're using a mask. It's very easy. Flip your color now back to black, your foreground color back to black, and paint it onto the mask, which then covers it back up. Because again, the mask is a hide all, so it's hiding those effects. Okay, right through here, painting into those areas. I'm going to zoom out so I can see all of her hair and do the same thing we did when we were dodging it. I'm just painting in some of those shadows to really kind of articulate it and pull it out and get some of that effect. I love dodging and burning hair because it really just makes it stand out. And again, you can go too far. You have to be careful. You got it. It's a subtle buildup. And that's why I love doing this method with the curves adjustment layer, because if it's too much, I can just paint the mask, change it if I want to. I can lower the opacity of the mask itself or the adjustment layer itself and bring that effect down. We don't have to worry too much about what goes into that process. Okay, good. That looks pretty, pretty good to me. So this final step now is this highlights layer. And this highlights layer I've seen in a lot of artists work, Photoshop artists and traditional artists, where they use it as a bright highlight to really delineate the apex, the top of, uh, of an area, of a contour, right? So I choose to kind of do the same thing in an image, but again, very carefully, very minimally. So the first place that I usually come to is this part right above the top lip. I'm sure there's actually a technical name for this I don't know what it is. If you know, put it in the comments below. I promise I'll believe you. Somebody's gonna put something really awful and that's just not okay. Um, I'm hitting these strong highlights again right through there. Just some of these little contour areas, giving the nose, the tip of the nose, just a little bump right through here, giving it a little touch of this effect. Up here where there's some makeup and there's a little bit of glitter and sparkle, doing the same thing through here. I'm not going necessarily to dark areas and trying to introduce this strong highlight. And I have been experiencing on my own artistic style, adding extreme dark lines to the image, almost like a comic illustrated effect. Uh, it works situationally, not all the time. Uh, soon I'll make a video about it and kind of explore it together on YouTube and see what you all think about it. So again, just trying to find some of these areas where I can create a little bit of kind of an, il an illustrated effect, a little bit of a neat kind of painterly effect to the image. I'm going to zoom out, look at the hair one last time and see if there's anything that we can hit in there. Yeah, maybe like a streak or two here, a couple streaks right there. 
these areas of hair that may have caught the light and popped a little bit. And this one step, I will, you know, in full disclosure, this final step of highlights can go too far too quickly. And it's hard to judge that with a black and white layer turned on. And as you're working, you get so caught up in, oh, I can add it here and I can add it, there, I can add it everywhere, right? So you got to just be careful. And that's why at this point, I think it looks okay. So to judge that, I'm going to turn off the black and white adjustment layer. And yeah, I think it looks okay. I dig this kind of effect. And it may not be for everybody. You don't necessarily have to do this highlight step. Traditional dodging and burning is just that, dodge and burn. But let's go through the process of showing all of this so you can see the before and after. I'm going to select all three of these adjustment layers by holding shift and clicking them all together. And then I'm going to hit control and G to put them into a group on a Mac. I think it's command option escape upside down Q G. So now that they're in a group, we can turn them on and off. This is with dodging and burning. Look at her face, dodging and burning. Are you looking at her face? Look at her face, dodging and burning. And now it's off before before, after. <laughs> so look at this contouring right through here on her nose and so forth, that highlight layer. It almost feels as you look at it and go back and forth, it feels like her lips are moving. It feels like everything's moving because we're that, and that is really denotes the process. We're creating that three dimensional texture and just bringing it out, that effect and pulling it out a little bit. Look down through here in her neck and so forth with it on, with it off. Those details are still there. We're just contouring a little bit more. Let's hit control and zero to zoom all the way out so we get a full view. This is without any dodging and burning. Look at her hair, without any dodging and burning, with it. There's more layers to it. There's more effect to it. And now, you know, again, that can go too far. As we're looking at it in this colorful layer, I'm gonna expand the group real quick so we can make some adjustments here. When I look through here, now it looks like her hair is a little bit messy in a way that it, it looks more put together right there. So by adding those highlights and shadows, I did too much. I went too far. And so it's distracting now. It pulls you away from all this other amazing stuff. So this is where we need to go back in, painting with black, to remove some of that. I'm going to remove the burning, because I feel like that's the culprit, just in that section. Now I'm going to come to Dodge, and just I'm thinning it out. Again, I'm painting at 10%. So at 10%, it's allowing me to build it up. If I was paying it 100%, it's all gone, right? 10% is just a little bit of a gentle touch and lets me build it up. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay. Let's turn it on and off and see what, we, what we're dealing with. Yeah, I'm okay with the rest of it, really. If you aren't, that's fine. You can leave a comment and tell me about it. I think it looks okay. And again, it, the goal of it is to create the three-dimensional nature. So I think it looks pretty good. And we've pulled that off. So that's dodging and burning inside of Photoshop. To reiterate the steps, we've made you know the three adjustment layers. We've paid attention to the different contouring in the image. We're trying to contour that three-dimensional nature to it and pull everything out following all the lines and the highlights and shadows and the midtones of the image. So this concludes the journey of this adventure for this video. In the next videos, we're going to go over the process of making an action to enhance eyes. And then we'll go through the process of actually retouching eyes and what I do uh, in that process. Thank you for watching this video. Consider giving it a like and subscribing. There's going to be a lot more future content coming out that covers cosplay composites and fantasy composites that I make in Photoshop. This is the beginning of my YouTube channel. And I sincerely thank you for watching this video and considering supporting it by liking it and subscribing to the channel to see that future content. I've been teaching myself Photoshop for a number of years, and before YouTube was a thing, I was reading magazines and going to conferences and so forth, trying to learn. And to be able to pass that knowledge on now, it's just a meaningful part of my journey. And if you have time, I really consider it if you would go to McKennaPro.com and check out their website, see the offerings they have of products and so forth. They're a fantastic lab. All of the products that I deliver to my clients is either a metallic paper or metal prints. It reproduces color in such a beautiful, beautiful way that's just jaw-dropping to the clients and they love it. So check out McKenna Pro, visit the other videos, give us a like and subscribe. And until the next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.